Hello, welcome to today's Coffee Corner. Today we're going to talk about display rules in models and drawings. We'll be exploring the power of display rules and see how we can use display rules in models for data visualization review. We'll also be looking at display rules to enhance presentation and construction drawings. And we'd be talking about and looking at best practices, tips and tricks for creating and managing display styles and display rules. So what are display rules? Well, they're platform technology. It's been around since Connect was first introduced. And display rules are a set of criteria that can be applied to a display style to change the appearance of selected elements in any view of a design model, either in a 3D model or a 2D drawing. The display rules allow you to control the symbology, appearance, display, on or off, of elements and building elements in models and drawings. This control is based on the property of the element, view, reference, or file. And in update eight, we're on update nine now, we had some great enhancement in display rules of supporting wildcards that help us when we are having our nested reference files. So we'll be looking at that. So just looking at data, in, that's delivered with open buildings in our work set. We have some examples of display rules. We have one in our little um, commercial building that has display rules for the fire rating. And in our training material, we have that as well. And it, it, display rules are very important, especially if there's anything about life safety or code. But there are sometimes there are things you can't see in a schedule, like a door schedule or a wall schedule, that you really need to see the data from the model. So in the example we're going to be looking at is, yeah, fire rating is very important. I'm going to add some more to this rule, and then we'll be able to show what doors are rated in those fire rated walls. So we're going to start off with our the delivered fire rating. From the pick list, you'll see that um, we can get to our display styles. And I'm just going to go up to show the delivered fire rating. But what we want to do is be adding the doors to it. So we go to our display styles and look at fire rating. And I'm going to go in and go to the display rules tools. And you'll see there's the rule of looking at a wall for the color coding of the one hour versus the two hour. But we can take this rule, fire rating wall, wall fire rating and expand it, copy it. And that's the beauty that you can copy between the different rules, copy from rule to another. You can also copy from local rules up to a DGN library. So they're very portable when you want other people to be sharing the rules you create on your project. So I have one called fire rating doors and walls. And then it's best practice to have a display style that you will link to that. And you want to give it kind of a name that you'll know what it is. I'm doing underbar um, wall. Well, let's put mark. My best practice is I do a local copy, we'll talk about later, and then import it into the name that you're going to want to have. So this is like a test file. So we're going in to link that. And now we'll apply it so you'll be able to see the rule. Actually, when I start changing the rules, you'll start seeing it display since I made my new mark display style linked to my um, rule, you will be able to instantly see it. So you can see we could be changing transparency, the color, the weight, priority, and we can go in and even hide elements if we want. And there's also display style overrides. We can do hatch pattern areas on them just in this quick review. So we can go in and maybe make it a little easier to see. In our preview, we're seeing it's a wireframe. But if I go in and do filled hidden line, you're actually seeing the wall filled in. And then everything outside that's not falling into that rule is turning transparent gray for your review. So it's just easier to see. And I did this so now when I go to copy, I could take the two hour wall and you can copy it and then paste it and just move it up on the list there. And then you just go and edit rather than going to 
from the pick list, you could just go in and, but you'll see it's under element, fire rating, and I could just go in and change it to non-rated. So I'm making it equal. I'm not doing any type of wild card. So it is important for spelling to have it work right. So you'll see that the non-rated wall showed up, but we want them to be a different color. So we're going to change them from the red that was there to a yellow color. So you'll see that instantly happening. And then we want to go ahead and create a new rule. And from the pick list, we're going to go ahead and go to pick property and we're going to element and then scroll down to door. And then it's a good practice to kind of know you can look at your schedule to figure out where the parameters are. If you're starting to look like, hmm, where is fire rating? So they're under different classifications. If you look in the schedule properties, it'll show you where they are. So sometimes fire rating might be under a different heading on different element types. But if you go to properties and going down towards door finishes, rate, and there it is, material and rating. So it's just under there. And then we're going to type in the one and a half hour rated door. So that matches data that's on the objects, the one and a half. So that, like I said, knowing what's on your schedule. And then we could make that a similar color to the two hours. So it'll be a reddish color and also make that a different display style. And so once I get one of these made, then you can copy it and then just be typing the change and then, um, you know, changing the color. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the one and a half hour. When you click on it, sometimes it opens it up, copy, paste, and change that to 45 minute. And then change the color. And we already have the filled hidden set from the copy, so we don't have to do that. And then one more copy for the non-rated doors. So you kind of get the idea that try to think of a quicker way to um, start filling this out. And like I said, there you're able to import these um, between different DGN files. And this one's going to be a yellowish color. And then there is a moving it up on the priority of the of the rules. And now you're seeing over there, there are doors. And if I go ahead that are color coded and by turning on and off that display, it's a little easier to see when you zoom around, you're seeing there's yellow doors in a red wall. That's just a hint that, well, someone's made a mistake and you're just going to go in, select those doors and change it. So it's a way, something that you might have missed on the schedule because you weren't really aware of what wall that they were in. So it's just a great workflow to be checking your work as you go. And then other things, doors are are important. That's when I recommend doing display rules are on because, you know, working back and forth with the schedule. If you're using any type of classification system, like the uniformat door classifications, sometimes it's easy for someone to make a mistake of placing an exterior door on an interior wall. So you'll see that we have green color are for exterior doors, B2050 for uniformat, interior are the purple, C1030, and then unclassified are red. So it's just a great way to be able to see that the doors are classified properly and as you saw before, quickly, easy to change. Another one would be looking at panic um, hardware uh, for emergency doors on egress doors. That's just another quick rule that you could be checking on your models as you're working. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. 
Thank you, and see you next time.